I'm going to show you just how easy it is to edit your gameplay footage on LumaFusion. Hey, it's Andre and in today's video I've been playing a little bit of Fortnite on my PS4 again and I'm going to show you just how I would create a top 10 video of my favourite kills from today's gameplay or on LumaFusion. I'm going to use screen recorded gameplay footage from the PlayStation itself which is done by double pressing the share button on the PlayStation controller which is then put on a USB stick and then transferred over to my Mac Mini which I'll be doing all this editing on. I also recorded my talking head footage separately on my Sony ZV-10 connected to my Mac Mini and into OBS but I'll decide later on whether I use those clips or not. Even though I'm using LumaFusion on the Mac Mini, the methods in this video will be the same if you use LumaFusion on an iPhone or on an iPad. So let's get over to the computer and start editing. I've got the Fortnite gameplay footage that I transferred over from the PlayStation and the talking head footage all on the desktop. So all I need to do now is open up LumaFusion. And then I'll create a new project which I will call Fortnite footage and I'll need to set the frame rate, which I usually do on my videos in 30 frames per second. So I'll just choose 30 and then I can create a new project. Now I need to transfer all that footage on the desktop and import it all into LumaFusion. So I'm gonna select the finder, choose all the files from the desktop and just quickly drag them over to the imported section. Now LumaFusion will automatically just put those in the shared imported folder, as you can see there. Now I've got my talking head footage and my gameplay footage. So because I want my gameplay footage to be at the bottom of the track, underneath the sort of the lowest layer, I'll drag that onto the timeline. You can see everything's there from all of my gameplay for that one clip. And now I can drag the talking head footage over the top of it. But as you can see, it's obviously a little bit too big, so that's gonna need to be rescaled. So I'm gonna click to edit it. I'm going to scale and fit. And then I just want to change the cropping of this. So I'm gonna crop out all of the black areas just so it's just my frame of my face. And then I'm going to just reduce the size of it as well just so it can be a sort of manageable size to be, to fit on the screen itself and then drag it into place where I want it to be. Next part to do is syncing the audio and just making sure you get the talking head part in exactly the right position on the gameplay. So I missed all the audio for this, but I know that I was mouthing the time that it was taking for the battle bus to launch. So I was saying counting down five, four, three, two, one. So I was matching up where that point was at which I was saying it. And then I, it just allowed me to sync the audio between there yeah, you can see, I'm mouthing, I'm sort of watching where I'm saying that. So I'm just looking for the part. So in this case, um, I've got the number six on there, six seconds left. So I just need to find the point at which the correspond I'm corresponding that mouth part, which is that part. And then I can just drag the talking head part to the right position on the gameplay and then I'm all done. And as you can see, I'm just mouthing it in exactly the right time now. So I did that deliberately while I was recording because I know I would have to do this in the editing process. So I can delete everything before it. And now we've got for that clip, everything is synced to the, into the right position. And the next thing I want to do is go through that footage on that clip and just find a point of where you want to highlight. For in this case, it's the kill that I get in the game. And then you just want to go just before it just so you can get a good amount, a decent amount of clip length. So when you start the clip, it's at this point forward, and then you just find that point at the end when you want to finish the clip. So at this point, just make that cut and you can delete everything before it because this is the part where I want to start the clip. And then I'll play it through it. And then I'm, so I'm looking for a point where I can, it can sort of naturally end. So once I've made the kill, there'll be a point at which the clip will sort of naturally end which is that point there. So I'm just gonna drag it probably a little bit forward, make that cut, and then look for the next scene. I didn't actually find another kill in the rest of this game. So I can now delete the rest of the clip that I don't want. So everything after the cut that I made previously, it can all be deleted and I can add the next Fortnite clip onto the timeline. 
together with the corresponding talking head clip as well. Because I want all the talking head clips to be exactly the same across every single different clip, I can copy the attributes from the first clip by selecting a clipboard and pressing copy and then selecting the new clip and selecting the clipboard again and pressing paste. And now it shares the attributes and the position and size as the first clip. So once again, I'm going to go through the clip and just find another point where I make a kill and then make that cut incision just before the clip starts. And then I can delete everything before it. And then find the point right at the end of the kill where I want to end the clip and then make the cut where I feel is necessary, which is there. And then you want to go do the same thing for the rest of your clips. So I'm going to zoom through this process because it's pretty much just the same. Add another clip onto the timeline, copy any attributes that I want the clips to share and rinse and repeat essentially up all up until I've got to a point as where you've got all of your clips before they need sort of fine tuning. So now I've got to a point where I've just got a timeline full of my clips, just full of all my killings. Now, before I sort of fine tune them, I just want to play through it all one, just to see how it flows initially before I go into a little bit more depth and a bit more editing. I always find in the editing process, it's always important just to keep playing through, just to make sure it all flows really well. And then, you know, just cutting off any section that you don't really need because you don't want to make it too long. So any point where you can just shave seconds off something, it's always best just to get rid of it. So the next part now, I'm going through each of the individual sections and just clipping off, see if I'm wasting any time at the end and at the start of the clip, but always making the insertion, just making sure that the clip actually makes sense to a viewer. So I'm starting it from the beginning, playing through a little bit, just to make sure it makes sense. Then I'm just making, just fine tuning it just to make sure it's, the clip's not too long before it moves on to the next one. And then this one, I found that the middle section between this initial shooting, which happens here. Terrible shooting. So the time between this middle section and the section where I'm not actually doing something, I'm actually running up this hill. I don't really need to see that. So I've made an incision at the start of the run until I start seeing this person again. So I'm just gonna go back a few frames, make that cut there. Now I could either do two things here. I could either make this, I could either just get rid of it altogether, or I could just speed it up. Just something different that's different from the other clips. So in this case, I'm just gonna speed it up. So back into the edit, I'm just gonna raise the speed of the clip by six times. And I've done that on the talking head part first. So I need to do that on the gameplay footage six times again. So now running through that clip, you get this initial part where I start shooting at the other player. And then you get all that boring part is now zoomed up quickly. So you still get the story, but it's zoomed up. You don't need to spend those extra seconds. And then you get that part, the funny, the funny gag part right at the end, which is at normal speed. And then you just want to keep doing exactly the same process for the rest of your clips. It's all about going over, just keep checking, just making sure that the flow is always right. I mean, it's quite simple. Once you've got into it and you've got your knack at it, you know, any novice or beginner can do this. Once you've got your framework of how you like to edit, then you can just keep repeating the same process over and over again. And, every, and even if you're doing different videos and just try that one little thing that's gonna make it 1% better every time. I'll let you into a little bit of a secret. While I was reviewing this actual footage and seeing the talking head footage, I didn't actually like the silly faces that I was pulling. So I just got rid of all of the talking head sections, but I will replace it with something else that sort of makes the video a little bit better in my opinion later on. In this next section, because it is a top 10 kills, I want to change the order of some of those kills. So I'm just going to pick a clip off the timeline and drag it to a position that I feel it deserves in the top 10. So it's easy as clicking and holding onto the clip and then dragging it to another position within the timeline. 
In this next clip, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to animate the scene. I wanted to, to have an effect where I zoom into the action as it's happening and then zoom back out towards the end of the clip. So I just want to double click on the clip to get into edit mode, select frame and fit. Now I want to use keyframes. So I want to find a point at which I want to be 100% zoomed out. And then the next point where I want to zoom in to focus on the action. And then that's the next keyframe. And then finally, I want to select the next point at which I zoom back out to 100% again. And then the moment I change the size or any alteration of any figures, it will select that as the new keyframe. And the good thing about Lumi Fusion now is you haven't just got the sliding scales to use, you've got a number pad and obviously those fixed figures as well. So it makes things a hell of a lot easier. So after I've made those final adjustments, just going through again, just making sure everything looks good. As you can see there, I'm happy with that. Because this is a top 10, I want a visual identifier so that the viewer knows what number it is. So I'm gonna add a clip and add an overlay title and then stretch the length of that overlay title so it's the same as the clip that it's referring to. Then I'm gonna double click on that overlay title just so I can edit it. And this gives you a chance to, to look at different styles that you might like. But all I want to do here simply is just change what is displaying. So I don't want it to say your text here, I want it to say number 10. So you click on that box there and then write number 10 or whatever you want in the box. And you can just position it to wherever you want it to be. Next, you might want to even change the font. Nothing's wrong here, it's just whichever font suits your style. And once you're happy with that, you go back to the timeline. As you can see there, I'm not quite happy with the position of that number 10, so I'm just going to drag it somewhere else. And that's a little bit better. Now, now I want to add some transitions just to give you that effect that it's number 10. So I'm going to try this burst transition first just to see what it looks like. So I think that's a little bit too in your face. So I'm just going to get rid of this burst transition by pressing the undo button. Just having a look at the other types of transitions just to see what may fit. So I'll have a look at this flash transition, see what that looks like. That's a bit better. It's probably good for this purpose. I'm just showing you the different types of transitions that there are. Like the talking head clips before where we copy the attributes from one clip to another, we want to do exactly the same here. We want the numbers to always remain in the exact same position. So there's two ways of doing this. We can either copy the overlay title and then paste it and then stretch it out to the new length of the title. And then add that trans flash transition on again. And then click into that overlay title. But obviously this time we want it to say number nine. And the second way, other than just copying it, is actually duplicating the clip. So that's nice and easy. But this time, obviously, we need to reduce the length of that clip to match the third clip. And then we add that flash transition on again. And then go into that clip and then select number eight this time. And then we just repeat this for all of the other clips.
And once you're done with all those transitions and overlay titles, just keep playing back through it in real time just to make sure that you're happy with it. Now I wanted to replace the talking head part, so I recorded something on OBS, essentially my reaction to it. So I just needed to import it back into LumaFusion and then add it to the timeline. And then find the corresponding place of where I'm actually talking about what's happening on screen. So a few adjustments that had to be made here on this one. But it's all about practice. Everything that we do here, it's all about practice. Once you do it once, you'll know the routine for the next time you do it. And then it just becomes easier and easier every time you do it. So I've got one of these clips for every single clip in the top 10 that I've done. But just like the talking head section, obviously you can see that it's blocking the gameplay footage. So like before, we just need to go into frame and fit and do that cropping again. So we're going to crop a bit to the left, a bit on top, a bit to the right and a bit to the bottom. And because this time I don't want it to be quite square, I'm going to add a little bit of edge softness and a little bit of corner radius as well. Just so it's a sort of circular frame instead of just the, the bog standard old square frame and then reduce that size and then place over to the right there. Just something a little bit different for this tutorial. And then play that through just to see what it looks like. I tried to, when I was recording, try to make sure there was center in the frame so that you can, so I appear in the center of the shot at all times. And then once again, we can make any fine cutting adjustments just to take any, any of those minor few seconds out that we don't need. And because we have multiple clips, we want to do the same process again and again. And with this one, you also want to do that same copy and paste thing that you did before, copying the attributes from one clip to another. So it's just selecting the clip that has the attributes, copying that onto the clipboard, and then pasting it onto the new clip so that everything's in the same position from clip to clip to clip. So every clip in the timeline has this is in the same position throughout the whole length of the video and we just want to do the same thing for every new clip that we add to the timeline so now i want to move on to a little bit of sound editing a little bit of volume control because i feel like the volume from the gameplay footage is a little bit overpowering when it comes to what i'm saying so i want to decrease the volume so i want to open the headers and then the mixers so i've got access to both track volumes and then I just want to adjust the volume on track one just down a little bit and then the volume on track three just up a little bit so that you can hear me talking and it's over the gameplay footage not too loud but just over it so, you, so the viewer can understand it it's always worth whenever you can just rechecking over the timeline just playing the whole thing again and again just See if you can shave some few seconds off somewhere or just add something that you've missed previously. Now we're almost at the end. All I need to do is add an intro, which I previously recorded. So I just need to import that into LumiFusion and then drag that onto the timeline that right at the start. Look at that face. <laughs> and just cut out any sections that we don't need. And just make sure it plays well. Because we want the sound of this clip on track number one to match the sound of the clips on track number three, we just need to separate the sound clip from that clip and then drag it down to the third audio track. This will just ensure that the volume of this track matches the volume of the other tracks. And then we need to do exactly the same thing for the outro. So import it into LumaFusion then add it to the timeline, extract the sound clip from it, and then put it on track number three, and then make those final adjustments to the clip. And then have a final review over the whole timeline. Just making sure that you're happy with every segment of every clip. And 
and then you're ready to export. You want to click movies and then I like to put it in files if I'm doing it on a computer. And then resolution, I like to set it onto 4K as well. And then video quality, ultra, but also dependent on how much space you've got on your device. And then export, and it's right in the movie. And you're done. In context with all of the editing and everything, it only took me just over two hours from start to finish to make this simple top 10 kills video on Fortnite. Yes, with more time it would have been a lot more fancier, but it just shows how easy and simple it can be just to make a video like this. If you want to see the full edited version of this video, I will put it in the end card of this video. I hope if you're a beginner or a novice and use LumaFusion that this video helped. And if it did, just let me know in the comments below. And also, if you've got any other questions about this tutorial or there's something you'd like me to try in the future, just let me know as well. Press the like button if you enjoyed this video. Make sure you press the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. And also press that bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks for watching the video, I'll see you on the next one.